Hi guys, it's Ben Heath from Lead Guru, and in this video, I'm going to explain the Facebook ad placement options, which ones you want to use and when. It's something I get asked about all the time, so I wanted to create a video quickly covering it. Before I get into it, I want to very quickly ask, hit that thumbs up button, that really helps me out. And of course, subscribe to my YouTube channel if you are new and haven't done so already. I release Facebook ads related content all the time. Okay, so I've created, a, firstly I should say, I've created a conversions campaign in my example ad account here. Um, that's going to be important. I'll explain why later. There are different placement options you want to use depending on your campaign objective, and that's a critical factor. So let's jump to the ad set level and scroll down to the placement section. Now, obviously, Facebook recommends automatic placements, um, and they do that partly because it's going to help you as a Facebook advertiser, but also partly because it's going to help Facebook as the advertising platform. They want to have the maximum flexibility with their customers, which is you and me, the advertisers, as to where they can put their ads because they have they might have more demand in certain locations at some times, less in others. So those of us that go with automatic placements, they allow us to... Um, yeah, to, to move things around and fill in the holes where they have this sort of ad inventory to sell, okay? Doesn't always mean it's the best option for you. So automatic places, before we get into the individual options, when should you use it? If you're running the conversion objective or a conversion-based objective where you're optimizing for your end goal, some examples of that other than the conversion objective would be things like um, lead generation, um, would be things like app installs, okay? Things where you can track what's gonna happen and you want Facebook to optimize for that thing, automatic placements is fine because Facebook's only going to put your ads across Facebook, Instagram, and the various other places where you are able and are generating conversions. They're not, for example, gonna put loads of your ad impressions on the audience network if people who are seeing on the audience network aren't going on to convert. So with a conversion-based objective, and I know that the campaign objectives are being updated very soon, so you may have slightly different options, but you'll be able to understand what it is I'm talking about if you have had that change happen in your ad account. The conversion-based objectives, automatic placements is fine. In nearly all other scenarios, I'm gonna make some adjustments and manually select certain ones. Right, so interesting here, consider using automatic placements to reach more people. Let's get rid of that. Reaching more people, Yes, that can be beneficial, but it's not often the objective. The objective is usually purchase, lead, um, sign up to my email list, watch this video, whatever happens to be. Okay. Manual placements. So before we get into placement options, there are four platforms. There's Facebook, Instagram, which everyone sort of knows and thinks about. There's the audience network, which can cause some confusion. And then there's Messenger, which again, everyone sort of is, is fairly familiar with. There are talks and have been for years now that Facebook is going to start adding WhatsApp as a platform that we can advertise on. It's owned by, well, Facebook that's now called Meta. It's owned by Meta. Um, and that is probably a potential really big opportunity for Facebook advertisers, Meta advertisers there'll be. So those are the four major um, placement options. Now, it's very rare that I would recommend deselecting either Facebook or Instagram. Sometimes you will, particularly if you're wanting to grow a following on either of the platform, but the vast majority of the time, we're going to have both those platforms selected. If you are not using a conversion-based objective, so let's say you're using something like traffic or something like reach, uh, maybe because you can't track conversions or because that doesn't really match up with your, uh, end, your, your goal from the campaign, I would often deselect audience network. And if we scroll down, we can see which of these placement options get deselected. These gray ones weren't available because it depends on ad creative, get deselected. It's these down here, these apps and sites, because that's what the audience network is. It's effectively external, it'll expand your reach with ads in external apps and websites. It's external to Facebook and Instagram. Not something a lot of Facebook advertisers think is part of the Facebook ad network, but if you use the reach or, or awareness campaign objective, for example, and you're getting really cheap um, impressions, you think this is great, they could all be on the audience network, which is apps and sites that are external to Facebook and Instagram. And that you might be thinking, hang on, I don't want to be on that sort of stuff. That's that's not what I want. That's not what I want my brand to be associated with. Often it's um, not the best quality articles, for example. So that's what audience network is. I would often also recommend if you're not using a campaign objective, a campaign based, uh, sorry, a conversion based campaign objective, deselecting messenger. In general, very few Facebook advertisers see significant volume from messenger anyway whether you leave it on or off that's less of an issue than i would 
quite confidently say you want to get rid of audience network if you're using traffic, reach, awareness, something like that. Messenger, less of an important point. But if we deselect Messenger, you can see that some will disappear. We've got Messenger inbox going. We've got Messenger stories. Um, and then otherwise, we've got the grey ones, which, you know, a slightly different thing. And then we've got the, the audience network deselected. So if we just have the Facebook and Instagram platform selected, you can see that the vast majority of placements are available. I'm not going to go through each and every one, but Facebook have categorized them into chunks. So here we've got feeds as the best place for your ads to be the majority of the time, both on a cost basis, on a likely to convert basis. There's also that's where people spend their most time across Facebook and Instagram. So that's where you're likely to get your most volume. You might get, for example, if you're running a traffic campaign, 60 to 70 percent of your clicks coming from the feeds, even if you were to select um, automatic placements and have everything available. Just because that's where people are most of the time. And they break down the feed into these various sections. OK, um, in general, the two big ones out of here where the majority of things are going to come from is the Instagram feed and the Facebook news feed, which is probably not all that surprising. That's what you probably spend the most time on as a user of these platforms. It's certainly what most users spend the most time on. It's absolutely fine if you're using traffic, um, you know, reach awareness, those sorts of campaign objectives to just leave feeds as it is there. Or you could be more selective if you really wanted to just narrow down to the very best quality and just go with the Facebook news feed and Instagram feed if you want to remove variables. That might be something you want to test in your Facebook ad campaign. It's unlikely to make a huge difference either way. These aren't low quality placement options. They tend to produce significantly less volume in terms of impressions, but it's, it's an advertiser's decision basically. Next, we get into stories and reels. That's usually how I would how I would leave it. I mean, reels is very new as a as a as a placement option as of the recording of this video. So um, we would usually leave it at the moment. We would leave it on, but that recommendation may change. But obviously, Instagram stories, Facebook stories, absolutely fine. Instagram stories is a reasonably significant placement option. That's where people do spend a lot of time on Instagram. You are likely to get quite a lot of impressions from there. The likelihood that people then click through is significantly lower than on the feed. Um, just kind of because that's how stories work. People want to move on to the next story, etc., etc. But absolutely fine to leave it in there. And I almost never remove um, Instagram stories and Facebook stories from my targeting options, even if I'm using something like the traffic or the reach objective, for example. OK, then we get down to this other stuff. We've got in article, we've got search, we've got in stream. Very low impression volume in general. You can either leave them on. Um, if you want, it's not going to make a huge difference either way because it might represent a couple of percent of your overall impressions. I would usually deselect them, particularly in an article. I just think that a lot of Facebook, you know, say Facebook, Instagram articles, a lot of them are low quality clickbaity type of stuff. I don't necessarily want my brand or the brands that we're advertising to be associated with that stuff. So we would often deselect. So those are the various placement categories, the various placement options. And what I've got here right now is the setup that we would often use if we're using a non-conversion based campaign objective like awareness, like reach, like um, traffic, for example, video views. We're going to be going with this sort of setup where we've basically narrowed it down to just Facebook feeds and stories. Sorry, Facebook and Instagram feeds and stories. If we're using conversion based objective like lead generation, conversions, app installs, we are usually going to go with automatic placements and that's our setup. So if that's been useful in terms of breaking down the various placement options, what they do, what they mean. Um, when you're on these platforms, by the way, and you're just sort of messing around, playing around, have a little think when an ad pops up thinking, oh, what placement? Oh, that's a stories placement. What what placement is that? What placement? You know, and you can you sort of get a feel from the user standpoint, which then inform you, informs you as a Facebook advertiser as to exactly what is uh, is going on. Hopefully that has been useful. Before you go, uh, one thing I want to quickly mention, and that's our Facebook and Instagram advertising services. So my company, Lead Guru, is a specialist Facebook and Instagram advertising agency. We create, manage and optimize Facebook and Instagram ad campaigns for our clients. And if you want to get better results on the platform and have a company like mine take the work off your hands, we can most likely do that for you. Um, we do have a 3K per month minimum budget requirement. 
But if you meet that criteria, then you can go ahead and book a free call with one of my team members. There's a link in the video description below. Just an informal chat where we can find out more about your business, how we can help. You can find out about our services, how much we charge, all that sort of stuff. Um, and uh, hopefully we get a chance to, uh, to work together. Um, if you found it useful, thumbs up, please. Comment below to let me know with feedback. Comment below if you've got any questions. And of course, subscribe for more Facebook and Instagram advertising and probably meta advertising as things change related content going forward. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye for now.